Hi, it's Lori Ballin here in Las Vegas. Welcome to another edition of 365 Days of KW Command. Today we're going to simply learn how to add a contact to KW Command. So we've done imports before. Now I'm just going to show you how to add a regular contact. So on the left hand side, we're going to go down to where these two heads are. That's contacts. Okay, from here, you probably don't have anything yet if you're just learning how to add a contact. So you're going to click on this blue button up at the right, add contact. So the first thing you're going to do is put your contact's full name. <laughs> I'm going to be very literal there. Now here you can add a relationship. So you can add a spouse, father, mother, son, daughter, brother, sister, sibling, parent, child, sibling of a parent, child of a sibling, <laughs> cousin, grandparent, grandchild, step sibling, step parent, step child. Oh my gosh, it's like a it's like a genealogy tree over here. Okay, so you can add whoever you want. Let's just say you're adding a full name and you want to add in somebody that is their spouse. Okay? So you can select a contact. So if Tinkerbell was full name spouse, I already have Tinkerbell in my system. So I could now add them, add that as a spouse, and then it will show their relationship. Or if full name spouse is not yet in here, I can go over to add and just go ahead and add in the info. Next, we have primary emails. So we have a personal email, work email, and other email. So we're going to put full name at gmail.com. Next, we're going to have a phone number. So again, using these little arrows, I always tell everybody if you're not sure where something is, click the arrow or the three dots. You'll see when I, what I'm talking about when you come across the three dots. So here we have mobile phone number, home phone number, work phone number, and other phone number. So it by default, isn't that interesting now that defaults the mobile? All right, now select the owner. Who owns this contact? So if you are a team, there is um, a team owner. And so I'm going to select Lori Ballin team. That's who owns the lead. Now you can assign a lead but not in this form. You have to add the contact before you try to assign it. The owner is the team owner or the agent that's an independent agent. They're going to be the owner. You can assign an owner also after the fact. And that's, that's basically saying, okay, David's on Lori Ballin team. And our agreement says any new leads that are generated through the entire time of our relationship, those leads are owned by Lori Ballantin. But if you bring in your brother, you know, a close family member, let's just say, or you have a spreadsheet of everybody on your on your, a, on a list when you join my team that are somehow exempt, then those would stay with David as the owner. It's really whatever your team agrees upon. Okay. So in this case, Lori Ballantin was the owner. Now, do I want to mark this as a lead? So let's just say I'm entering this because this person just called off a yard sign and I spoke to him and I say, okay, this is what we're going to do. And now I mark him as a lead because now I want him to go to one of the agents on my team or I want it cultivated or sorted a certain way. So I'm going to mark as a lead. Do I want to send this lead to lead routing? So if I have a lead pool set up, It'll now, after I submit that contact, it will now route to the people on my team according to the rules of that lead route. And then here, do I want to add it to the sales pipeline? So these three options are not required. They're completely optional. If, they're, if it's not a new lead, it's just a contact. You don't have to mark it as a lead at all. Okay, and then tags. So tags... I always tell everybody tags should be how you would identify somebody in a particular audience of some sort. It helps with audience segmenting. Also tags are quite typically most often in a, in a database or CRM, 
they are used to fire an action like they trigger something they trigger an email they trigger trigger some sort of automation they trigger a zap if you're using zapier or something like that now in kw command as of today um, early 2020 there's no triggers being fired yet by tags however I think we will see that change now if you're using PySync to sync two databases you're already noticing how tags work because they do make a difference you can have multiple tags you can color code your tags so um, Jeff ha my brother Jeff has a nice video here a video on tag strategy and I know my daughter Sabrina also created a, a tag guide um, if you want to reach out to them but this is basically mine all my all my greens are how I identify that audience as a lead green is money like how did that come in as a lead and then I've got other things on here so that's tags so if I if this person registered this is a new lead and they registered for my free home buyers guide well I have a tag in here called home buyers guide so I'm gonna tag them next we're gonna go to add more information and we're gonna click the next little arrow add additional contact information so preferred method of contact email phone number text or do not contact okay Next, we have additional emails. So if they have more emails that you want to put in, remember up top we did personal or whatever you dropped your arrow down. Now you can put another one. And you can put as many as you want by clicking on these little plus signs and see it creates another field. Additional phone does the same thing. You can just keep creating these little fields. Just make sure you drop down the arrow so you know what the segments are there. Next, we have address, primary address and street address. Now, what's important about this field is that this is what will auto assign a neighborhood. Now, auto assigning a neighborhood does not mean that any smart plans or automation start at all. It just assigns a neighborhood to that person. So then when you do put them on a neighborhood nurture or something like that, that neighborhood would appear. So right here, we're going to put street address. And if there is a suite number, don't put it in this part. So we start putting in an address. You'll notice some suggestions appear. Okay, then you put in the suite number in the next one. All right, and then the neighborhood will populate after we submit this contact. Okay, now social profiles. So this is cool. You have the ability to add their Facebook URL. Then you can add a profile and you can do their Twitter URL, add a profile, their Instagram URL, add a profile, LinkedIn URL. So you can put all of those social media links in here. Now there is a database health score where you are given a up to a 100 percent rating on how well you filled out this contact record and i'll just tell you now that um it's it's i believe it's full name uh phone number and email so 20 percent is phone number 20 percent is email tag is four percent primary address is also a component one social media channel I believe is four percent then we go into this little about section and you have a uh, legal name description you have a birthday well birthday is also four percent of that score and um, so not every field counts in in that score and then the lead source company profile and tag are all also part of it if I didn't say those already so right here you either need their work their company or their job title to get that four percent so one or the other would be here so I would put her birthday in here I would put full names birthday in here now I always put the current year um, so I guess they, I think they have fixed the birthday sorting. 
but I personally don't care if they're what year they were actually born in. So I never actually try to go back and chase the actual, that actual year. In fact, I will, even if I have the year, I will change it to a, just a recent year. That way, if I'm ever, I don't know, I just don't want to ever be messing with somebody's age or revealing somebody's legal identity that way. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just weird that way. So I always put my, mine is the current year. You can put their home anniversary. This is really cool for following up with people that bought a home with you um, for their home anniversary. I love that field. And you can run campaigns and send cards and do things like that. Um, so work, let's just say I, I know that she works at Keller Williams for some reason, or I don't know where full name works, but I know full name is a engineer. Okay, sales pipeline. Now you have captured and connected. So in my case, we do um, stage, when we, they first come in, they're called captured. Once we speak with them, they're moved over to connected. And this helps keep a, uh, an idea on that sales pipeline if you added them to sales pipeline. This helps you keep a better idea of all the people that are in your sales pipeline and where they are at in the process. And then lead source type. So you can select from the list, you can select from contacts. So these would be, I don't know what that one is. Let's go back to select from list. So here's all of the lead sources right now that we can pull from. Here's one you can see that I manually entered IDX leads. And so now it, I'm able to pull whatever that lead is, whatever that lead source is. Next we have custom and um, by the way, these lead sources, in order to add more lead sources, we w I'll have to show you after the fact, but it's done in your settings. Up here next to Lori Ballin, there's a drop down arrow. If you click here and you go to settings, then you go to command settings, and then you go to tags, custom fields, I believe lead sources in there. Um, you know what? Now I have to look <laughs> because I don't want to tell you wrong. Okay, there we go. Settings. Uh, command settings, contacts, custom fields, no. Okay, hold on one second. All right, we're just going to come back to that because I just looked and I don't see it. They've keep They've made several changes. We used to be able to put the lead source in only through a spreadsheet and then there was a spot to add it and I thought it was right here and I'm not seeing it so we'll have to come back with the custom lead source thing so stay stay with me on that one and this one's not populating yet so we'll, we'll have to see what we're doing next on the custom lead sources so for right now I know that you can import in the lead sources with your import that's what I did here and then you can also select from their lead sources, and there's a bunch of them. Okay, so n that is required for to make to get to your one to get to your 100%. I believe lead source is 4%. Okay, then you have your custom fields. Now these are custom fields that I personally added. So if there's anything that they are not giving you, you can create custom fields, and that is up here. So you go to command. So you go to up here. You click on settings, then you go down to command settings, and then custom fields. So here's your custom fields, and here's your custom tags. Custom fields and custom tags. I don't see lead source under any of these. And I looked. Okay, so if these are all these are all your um, command settings up there. Okay. Then you, so in my case, I have, I want to know the landing page they registered on, and this is using my main um, WordPress real estate website, because I also still am keeping my own main website that's my asset. So I want to know where they registered, what their IP address is, if they're a local or they're from out of town, what offer they registered from, and um, I have a score that has to do with a VIP program. So don't worry about what those are necessarily, but they're, they're things that I use on my team and I wanted them in there, but it's really cool that you can add 
um, blank field, you can add a URL field, you can add a checkbox field, you can add a drop down box. There's lots of really cool custom field options. In fact, here we have a button, add, add a custom field. Oh, that's pulling from the ones I already created. Yeah, so here's all the ones I've created. Landing page, IP address, Las Vegas local, offer score, and okay. So then once you've covered all of those pieces, you can click create. And your content is, your contact is now created. Whoops, let's go back and look at them really quick just so that you can see what we did here. Okay, so we got it. See how the contacts health score is up here and it says 96%. So we missed one of those 4% um, items on the list. So I'd have to go back and check which one, which one it was that was from that list. I think it's a tag. I think I forgot. No, I got tag. Got lead source. Oh, social media profile. I didn't add any of those links. I just showed you what they were. So that's what I'm missing. So if you get all of those, then you'll get to your 100%. And then you would follow and do the rest of the wonderful things with your contact, like adding them to smart plans, assigning tasks, notes, calendars, emails. I have another video on contacts that is a core lesson that covers all of the rest of those pieces. But for today, I just really wanted to show you how to add KW command contacts. And I think that completes that for you today.